Uh, good afternoon. I'm Kurt Hirschhorn. I'm a resident in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you for having me up here. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about the screw bone interface uh, of non-locking and locking screws. Uh, we all have heard about the differences and the uh, benefits of each of the different types of screws, but uh, no study up to date has really looked at the interface of these two different types. Uh, so what we, are, what we uh, plan to do is to look at the interface. Uh, really, the way the study came about was uh, we had a traumatic uh, tibial plateau and a biomechanical engineer who underwent an a, a AK uh, due to soft tissue injuries, and he was really interested in the mechanics of the, the construct. So we, we looked at his uh, construct, then we did a cadaver study as well. Uh, as, as everybody knows, there's a lot of uh, inherent qualities of the screws, the different types of screws that can lead to diff uh, increased strength, which I won't go into much detail about, uh, just, uh, uh, say it, just to say that there are differences that will make them stronger. Um, there's also are different uh, factors in the screws, aside from them being locking or non-locking, that can lead to increased pull-out strength. Uh, as most people probably know that the differences between the two different types of screws are really in the plate screw interface. Uh, locking screws securely lock the screw to the uh, plate uh, by the threads in their head uh, and they act as a fixed angle device. Uh, I have a movie on here but I don't know if it's going to show it, but what it what the gist of it is is that the non-locking screws compress the plate to the bone and the non-locking screws uh, due to their, their threads in their head will not uh, compress the actual bone. There's a, a, a gap and there's no compression. Uh, and this, this in graphic form kind of shows that. Uh, and everybody already knows w why we use them, standard AO technique. Um, but no one's really t uh, talked about what happens at the interface, uh, which is, uh, we feel, somewhat important. Uh, these are these were came off the AO uh, website, and it just shows different uh, constructs and their strength. Uh, as you can see, the locking uh, bicorticals are by far the most uh, uh, strong compared to the the uh, non-locking. And this is another one that everyone's seen before in the osteo osteopenic model. Uh, that uh, locking screws are fi far superior. Uh, there certainly are advantages, uh, as that last slide showed that uh, uh, there's increased pull-out strength in uh, osteopenic bone, less disruption, minimally invasive. They are fixed angle devices. Uh, you don't need to compress the bone. And there's an enhanced uh, axial and torsional rigidity. Uh, but there are also some disadvantages that uh, really aren't talked about. First of all, uh, you really don't have a good purchase. You can't feel that screw home that you do with the conventional screws. Uh, and if you miss the bone, you really are not sure uh, how well, you, you know, what's going on with that. And of course, they're more expensive. The locking plates are more expensive. Uh, there have been some studies uh, in the JOT that showed that uh, if you cross-thread the, uh, the locking screws, you reduce the, uh, the load to failure. And what really was our big question was most of the locking screws have a different pitch in their head than in their, the shaft of the screw. And we weren't sure what that would do in the bone screw interface. So after we, we looked at our initial uh, amputated screw, we, we had uh, cadavers. And what we did is we, we treated them uh, as, we, as we would typically treat a, a, a plate. We would do an initial non-locking screw to compress the plate down. And then we'd put uh, locking screws afterwards. And some of them, we would just use uh, uh, locking screws with a, with a clamp. And we compared the two to see what would happen. And then we would send them out to a special lab in Las Vegas that would take thin uh, sections across the screws. And here is an example uh, of a locking screw. This is the proximal cortex. You can see the head, and you can see a portion of the uh, plate in the top uh, left corner. Uh, and you can, what, what is the important thing is you can see the proximal portion of the, uh, the threads that there's a compression, as you would expect. And you can see a little gap in the distal portion of the threads, which uh, has, has not, has, hasn't been re, uh, reported as of yet. Uh, this is a, uh, another non-locking screw. This is the distal uh, cortex. And you can see the same thing. The proximal, or the, the threads that are closer to the plate, 
you can see the compression and you see a little gap distally. This is a locking screw and uh, you don't see that uh, that gap in the distal portion of the threads that you do in the, in the non-locking screws. So uh, essentially what this shows on a histologic slide is that the non-locking screws compress and the locking screws do not, which everybody already knew. Um, and this is the distal portion of it. And again, you don't see any gap in the, uh, in the, in the threads. Uh, so uh, what we found with this was that the non-locking screws showed a predictable gap on the distal side of the threads due to the compression. And then the non-locking and the locking screws did not show this pattern. Um, so what you can derive from this uh, is that the non-locking screws had less uh, thread screw uh, contact than the locking screws, and less uh, surface area of a screw and bone. And the compression of the near cortex may explain this finding. Um, Increased uh, bone screw contact of the locking screw may help uh, explain, and to some extent, their uh, superior pull-out strength when compared to the non-locking screws. Now, people may ask, well, you can use uh, pegs with uh, equal uh, efficacy in, in many circumstances, uh, and that is due to their, uh, their uh, fixed angle uh, characteristics. So what we are planning on doing is, is obviously, we're, we're going to do more, uh, and we're, we have to find some way to quantify the amount of surface area that, uh, that the, the difference is between the two th uh, threads, and we're working with a, a Georgia Tech to come up with a, mo a three-dimensional model to quantify it. And of course, the pull-out studies have been done, but it would be a good uh, uh, opportunity to do those as well. Uh, thank you very much.